Mr. Bati, of us, uh, we are fully away. Um, DSS of Nigeria has the history of uh, gross violation of court orders. And the fact that Tinamde Kano was brought to court on 29th day of June 2021 without reference to we uh, as lawyers that he was, being, he was being taken to court on that day, the court made an order. Because the order for the court, for them to produce him in court on 26th of July, 2021 for trial to commence. It's an order. So it's immaterial that court commence um, vacation on that day. They're supposed to have produced him in court. So they have a history of clear violation of court orders. Even in this case, I don't want to mention other cases or record. In this case, on 14th of October 2015, when Namdekan was arrested in Lagos and brought to Abuja. He was taken to Manchester Court on, on, on 16th of that October and granted bail of Manchester Court. Then the VSS refused to obey the order granted them, granted admitting to them bail. On 19th, he was taken to Fire High Court. Adam J also granted him bail unconditionally. That order was flouted. Then only for them to file free for us an unfounded charge, 11 count charge against him on 23rd day of December 2015. So they have the history of flouting court orders. It's immaterial where vacation commenced on, 20, on 26th. This was brought into court on, on 26th for trial, for commencement of trial. So, and also it's more so when the DSS has denied us access to him a few days before the, before the day uh, for the trial of the case, of, of, of commencement of trial. We made an effort to see him trial last week, trial last week, before the trial was kept, before the trial on Monday. They, they never allow us to see him. And it's fundamental that in a criminal proceedings of this nature, we should see, like, assuming the trial was supposed to go on on Monday, it now means that we have no, we have no pre trial conference discussion with our client before that Monday. So we are denied access to see him. And so this is what we are talking about. That was why we filed an application to get him transferred to prison custody. So we will have our access to him to prepare for trial. So, and I want to put it on record today that. That application, though the court was insistent about getting that application because of the fact that uh, uh, because he said we're in vacation, but that application will be heard at next I don't date. When had, and the court must positively consider that application because we must have a, have a forum to see him, interview him, and also before the trial commences. So it's fundamental that that application is considered in the, in the positive to allow us to have access to him. Though another was made by the, on the on the 26th of July. We are, we are uh, called made another based on all my application, allowing him, allowing us access, all the access to him Mondays and Thursdays. And I'm hope, I'm on the, I'm the hope that BSS will also obey these orders. So what happened in court on 26th of July, in summary, is not strange to us. It's very, very conversant with this political trial. We are, we are used to it in 2015. We express it. We, if we express a situation whereby in that kind of, when we be brought to court, it look as if the president is being brought to, brought to court. A person has committed no offense unto law. So we are very familiar. But unfortunately, the treatment was extended to the media and also the lawyers who were locked up from the courtroom. So it's unfortunate. Uh, and the lawyers, the, 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 the courtroom is only the tradition where the lawyers belong to. I was surprised they were locked up. I have, it, also took, it took my intervention to ensure that many of them were admitted. Because when I came in, I was, I was, I was, I was astonished in the first place that lawyers were locked up from the courtroom. So I have to intervene to get to ensure that some were allowed in. So, okay, uh, if I hear Jeff, I will take uh, you know a short break. Uh, when we return, the conversation will continue. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. You're watching the Morning Show here on the Rise News Channel. Well, the council of the IPOP leader, if I age your four, is still with us from our Abuja studios, the IPOP leader, Namdi Kanu. Thank you so much for staying with us, Mr. Age four. Let's talk about that prayer that was denied you, by the course, the prayer to have him transferred to a correctional center. Uh, is, that solely your, is that solely because you're unable to access him to provide better counsel or are there other reasons why you wanted him transferred to a correctional center you see the point is that when a person is charged with criminal offense and the offenses of social nature my client is charged with 
uh, he should be allowed access to his lawyers also, giving adequate time and facility to defend them. So, and we didn't think that the DSS is a convenient forum for him to be detained. So, and it is more so when DSS made it known to us that they've concluded the interview, they call it investigation. So I don't know what is still in there. So they should allow him, they will transfer him to a, a, a place recognized by law where he's supposed to be for him trying, pending when application for his bail is considered. So uh, because we are being restricted from seeing him in the DSS facility. Uh, that was why we filed that application. And also let me correct this impression. That application hasn't been had. Uh, I, ordinarily, it's application grantable as a matter of course. So I just mentioned it to the court because uh, it was filed on 14th of July and served on the prosecution of the federal government on the same day. So, and they filed their counter every to this application on the 16th, for eight hours after receiving our being served with application. And the, we heard it for the reasons best known to them. They didn't serve us the counter affidavit. Until on 26th morning, in court, they ambushed us with the counter. So I only mentioned to the court that look at what transpired because they raised issues in their counter affidavit, which you need to address by what further affidavit. So to ensure that the court hear it on the, on the merit. So, but I mainly brought the attention of the court, my lord, that application to be for my client to be transferred to prison is grantable as a matter of course. It didn't need a formal application to that effect. But because of the nature of this case, we have to go by a way of formal application. We, are in, we have to bring in, bring in laws, bring in the, the laws and facts that will necessitate the, 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 the constitution of the application and the merit and possible grant of the application. So it was adjourned for consideration to this adjourned date. Of course, there are way the courts ask either the prosecution or we, the first counsel, to come up with an application for fiat to enable him to uh, entertain the case during, during, uh, during a vacation. Uh, so that is the position. We are, we are, fully, we are, we are, we are not comfortable with him being detained in DSS custody while the trial commences. And I will object to it and I will oppose it because that is not place, the, place, the place we'll be. We may, you may be surprised to hear that during, 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 during the last visit, one of my colleagues, uh, one of my colleagues, colleagues, colleagues during our, our last visitation to him, one of my colleagues was, 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 was harassed by DSS. And they will call you to come to, 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 to that place because when you apply for, to see him, they will give you a confident time, time confident to them, not confident to us. They may ask you to come 6 o'clock in the evening, 7 o'clock in the evening, or come on Saturdays. So I don't think we're going to work with that kind of guideline. So, and if you go there by 7 o'clock in the evening or 7 o'clock in the evening, you end up leaving the premises around 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock under clear case, under intimidation. So, and one of my colleagues was harassed. I don't want to make it public, but I'm saying it. So, we cannot effectively defend him while in the SS custody. So, we are going to oppose it. He must be transferred to prison custody. So we are, we, we are going to address it in the fullness of time because we are going to file a further affidavit to that effect and get it argued on the merit on a certain date. So thank you. All right. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to ask, you say you've not been getting access as you should get. When, when last did you see Nandi Kano? Number one, uh, what was his state when you saw him? Two, I'd also like to ask you, uh, have you been able to now go one step further? Because there was this clause about the judge not being uh, a vacation judge, you know, to file that fiat. And thirdly, there were some IPOB members arrested, you know, uh, that day on the, on the 26th that he was supposed to be in court. And I remember, I think it's our political uh, uh, editor, our chief political editor, Somna Sambo, that was telling you while you were, you know, granting the press audience that day that some members were arrested and you didn't even know about it. What's, what's the state with those people? Uh, what's going on? Have you been able to intervene in their case and what were they arrested for? Well, uh, some of them, after my interview and also possible appeal to the security agents, some were, arrested, were released. So we have a minimum number of them still in detention. Now we're following up. I've already made a contact with CP, FCT to ensure they, they are giving them, they are released unconditionally. And we are, we are going there this morning to follow it up. So, um, uh, uh, of course, you know the way and manner they behave. Uh, this people, a pub for court is a public place, accessible to the public. And they never conducted themselves in a manner that suggests they are violent. They were just there to observe the proceedings of the court. But what happened before the court is a matter of serious concern to the public and to the world. You see, the as if they have this, there's a war going on, battle going on, shooting all over the, over and over the places, intimidating people. 
So, obviously, if that kind of atmosphere continue to be witnessed in any time the matter is adjourned for hearing, that means there will be no fair trial. Because the same federal government prosecuting down the canon is also uh, chasing fly away from the court from observing the proceedings of the court. Why right? we are restrained from coming to the court? So it's a matter of serious concern, and we're taking steps because, as I speak to you, international community is following up. They are watching on what's playing out in court. I don't want to mention them, but it's a matter of international community is following up. The American government also has, uh, they, they, they are following up. I don't want to mention uh, the, the, the foreign government who are interested in the matter, but I can show, assure you that the foreign government is following up. And we're briefing them daily on what's transpiring in court. So it's no longer business as usual. Where people will be, people's rights will be grossly violated and they will leave, they will go on, uh, unchecked. So we are going to, we are taking steps to ensure that we will keep the world abreast of what is playing out there. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, coming to, coming to uh, the, the, the issue of uh, people arrested, I'm, I, also, I was also informed yesterday that people who came for the trial, who came to witness the trial also, we are, we are, we are, we are arrested in Kogi, Lokoja. So by military. And they've been detained today, about 30 of them. They were arrested yesterday and still being detained as I speak to you at this moment. So we are still also following up on that. And I'm appealing to the, to the, to the security agency to prevent on the ship of my staff to direct his people to release my people, people who were who in court on that day, who, people who merely came to observe the proceedings and shout out their leader. So they should release them without them because they didn't, come, they didn't come to cause any form of havoc or, or violence during the proceedings. They were arrested yesterday on their way going back to, to the east. At, 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 at Lokoja, and I've still been detained in Lokoja military barrack today. Council, what are your next steps? Is it possible for you to outline uh, your next steps for us? It's clear that your client will remain in custody. Okay, thank you uh, so much. Uh, October. Uh, uh, so what are the next steps that you intend to take? If you could just outline them for purposes of clarity. We have taken steps to apply to the Honorable CJ for fiat because uh, the court gave us a window that um, either the prosecution or the defense counsel will also apply. We have done that, and I know they will not apply. So uh, uh, we applied and waiting for uh, approval from the CJ uh, in that regard. So, and also, in line with the substance order of court, uh, that we should see him on Mondays and Thursday. I already informed the public, the public that I'll be going to see him tomorrow at 2 p.m. So I understand that the ESS will have made communication with them, refuse to. Uh, reply, reply our text, but I will go there tomorrow by 2 p.m. 2 PM. So, and um, whatever outcome, I will make it public. So, because they, we can't continue to live this way. So, if they don't want to try him, they should let us know. Uh, so, uh, that's the position. Uh, waiting the approval of the CJ that, uh, for, for our application for, to grant fiat to the Honorable, Honorable Court to hear the matter during vacation. And uh, that's um, what we are waiting for. And it's more so when my Lord are expressing stress to entertain this charge during this process, during the vacation. So, and it makes it more easy for us because if the Lordship is not disposed to hear the application, to hear the suit during the process, during the vacation, to have been a different thing altogether. So that ground and I believe the CJ will consider application on the merits. Okay, that's the... Uh... So, but also, let me, let me, let me correct this impression. I've, um, I, it's, I've, I find it very worrisome. Because uh, several, several years I've had you over the media, and also I watch you, uh, we follow you on social media, also watch your programs most likely every morning, and I've had you several mention about Namdekan arrest in Kenya. So, and it's important at this function, I find it a, a convenient forum to correct that narrative. Uh, and also, I believe uh, this, um, this my position will influence yours too. Uh, I want to understand the fact that Namdekan was never arrested in, was never arrested in Kenya. Uh, so what took place in Kenya was a clear case of abduction and kidnapping. So I wanted to get, let the world understand this part. He was not arrested. So the issue of arrest never come to play. So because if you, if you compare what's happened to Nnamdi Kano in Kenya and what is playing out today in Benin Republic, you see that Iboho was arrested and taken to custody where he's been subjected to trial. But Nnamdi Kano was kidnapped at the Ponerobi airport Taken to a place, not even a police facility. Also, you may be also be surprised to hear this morning that in, upon his abduction, within 24 hours after the abduction, people who are familiar, who, who, are, who are his friends, start looking for him. And they visited all the police facility in Nairobi in search of him. He was not seen anywhere. So, and he was detained in, the, in, the, in, the play, in, the, in that private residence for eight days. So that is a clear case of kidnapping.
So after eight days, he was now handed over to the Nigerian security uh, agents who brought who smuggled him by by a strong rendition. So, so what happened in Kenya is a clear case of oppression, a rendition oppression against Namikano, which is a gross violation of international law, uh, 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 international law, uh, which Nigeria and Kenya are all signatory to the treaty. I mean, deliver convention protocols, which are, and also protocol against torture, torture of persons. So, which we have already invited the international community, international court of justice, to investigate the what transpired in Kenya. So, I don't want to go into the merit of that, but let me just correct that impression. So, the issue of arrest does not even come to come the first place. So, I want to correct you to stop telling people that Nandi was arrested in Kenya. He was never arrested. He was abducted by a, by a rendition, through, through a rendition of pressure. He was never arrested. So, if they have arrested, if he was truly arrested in Kenya, they were, they were subjected him to the proceedings, the surrounding proceedings in Kenya. Then the world will know he was arrested. So what happened to Iboho? Iboho was arrested and it was made known to the public that he was arrested. So he wasn't arrested. So let us correct that impression because it's giving my people very serious concern each time you mention about arrest. And you can see me using word kidnapping and abduction regularly in my interview. So I'm not mistaken about it. So there's a clear different word of difference between a case of arrest and also a case of abduction. So what happened to my client in Kenya is a clear case of abduction and kidnapping. So I want you to be reflecting it in your subsequent interview, please. Because I heard you yesterday telling the well, Visa Commissioner that uh, he was arrested in Kenya. No, was not arrested in Kenya. Answer. Thank you so much you for that. Well Martin. advised mm. that I know the difference between arrest mm. and also uh, extraordinary mm. rendition. Uh, those are not issues that can be explained to me. Uh, but I know that, uh, you know, uh, you guys have approached the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Uh, to specifically sure. accuse the uh, Nigerian government of abduction. Uh, where are we with that? Sure. No, no, we are waiting for the communication has already been sent to them. We are waiting for further identity from the, from the African Union. And I believe uh, we also filed a little bit of urgency. It's a certain urgent attention to that, that, that correspondence. So I believe, um, and we're checking up. Uh, so, but, uh, but I believe that you'll be more, more, more at home with the uh, issue of abduction and arrest than you. <laughs> uh, with, being fair, with all fairness to you, so I believe I should be more at home with that. Uh, what arrest amount, amounts and what abduction amounts? No, so I don't, uh, need, I, believe, I don't um, need any education I is on this subject. Uh, no, I don't need any education. No, well, I, I, I'm a lawyer, and I don't think. Uh, no, don't worry I'm a, about I'm that. I'm an expert in this field, Mr. Hey, don't worry, don't worry. You, <laughs> okay, you are not in a position <laughs> to educate me. At this one. Please. Yes, uh, Mr. Ejiofor, for the last time you were mm. on the morning show, I, you raised concerns over your clients getting fair trial. Can I ask you, do you think that your, your client is being tried in the court of public opinion? And are you worried that that may affect the outcome or the decision of the courts? Thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Adesua. I thank you for bringing me, for reminding me of this. Because the point is that... Um, what is playing out today, and this uh, Nigerian government is conversant with that, is uh, we are conducting what they call media trial. And we are good, for, we, are, we, are, we, are with, we are with them in that, um, in that part, on that part. So I don't think we have a problem with that. We are doing what they call media trial. Uh, of course, before the last agenda, before the 26th of July, the world was informed by, my, by the Honorable AG that what will be seen in court on 26th of July, we are going to see a case of uh, murder, terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, or whatnot. But I can assure you, I can confirm to you this morning, I can confirm to you this morning, that on 26th of July 2021, we were in court. There was no new charge introduced to this, in this case. There was no any form of amendment in this, in, this, in this charge. No form of amendment. So we are into what they call trial, media trial. So, and uh, we need to inform the public very well, uh, properly. So there was no amendment to the charge. And you know, in law, you have to see who has that must prove. It's, not, it's one thing for you to level allegation against somebody, as frivolous, unfounded, and bogus as they may be. But it's for us to come to the court and establish it. So the fact that you are saying that you are going to see a case of murder, banditry, kidnapping, and all whatnot, and on court, in court we didn't see anything. So even the application will file in time, serve on them on 14th of July. We are not responding, we are not serving on us in good time. Because if they had filed and served, uh, served on that application in good time, we have responded and, and possibly convinced the court to take the application on that day. So I am not averse to this kind of practice. We are very familiar with it. It's been all since 2015, and we are there for them. So they will, first of all, try, try somebody, particularly somebody, with a, uh, somebody who is standing on a political trial. 
uh, or, or, or special interest or media and getting convicted. So I can assure you that 60 or 80 percent of uninformed Nigerians had already believed that Nani Kano committed a case of murder, a case of kidnapping, a case of torture. When there's no such case, even in the, in the court, there was no such charge in court. So it is their practice, and we are good with them. We are, we are, we are going to give them, follow their head on, on that part. Okay. Thank you. I'm not worried at all. So okay. what are they saying? We're going to get it debunked in the, in the public opinion. Okay, Mr. Jeffo, I mean, you didn't answer my question I asked earlier on. I asked about when last, you know, did you sorry, see... Sorry, Mr. Rufayne. Did you see Namdi Kano? Because you said you've not been getting access to him. What was his state? I also asked you... Uh, I also have more questions. We'll come back after the break. We'll talk some more. All right, welcome back. So we still have a counsel to Namdi Khan, if I for here. If I, I was asking before two things real quickly because of time. Number one, the state of Namdi Khan the last time you saw him. What's his health like? Uh, secondly, uh, Katrina Lang, British High Commissioner, yes, they said Britain will provide consular services. What's the talk about that? Have you, have you spoken to the British as regards this? Let's talk quickly, if I Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Rufai. I'll be very quick about um, my response on this. So, I, on record, and also on record of the SS, we visited Namdi Kano last on 17th of July, 2021. That was on, sad, on a Saturday. Uh, the Saturday, they asked us to come around 6 p.m., and uh, around 4 p.m., and uh, we were there till about 9, 10 to 10 o'clock in the night. That was then the concluded interview with him. So that was last time we saw him. And at the time we saw him, he was still wriggling in pains of um, grievous injuries he sustained on account of the torture meted out to him during his detention in, uh, in Kenya. And secondly, and the uh, burden of uh, solitary confinement. Uh, because when somebody is uh, kept in a, in, a, in a confinement where he has access to, to his latest friends and um, where which has, where he cannot communicate with anybody. You know the body son, you know how it is for somebody to be kept in such an environment. And he's not giving much attention. So, and last week, being, last week, we made serious effort to see him. And also get him prepared for the trial that's supposed to commence on Monday this week. So, on 19th, we made a contact with the SSS department uh, uh, who are corresponding, corresponding with us in this, in this case. They refused to give us attention. 20th, same thing happened. 21th, same thing happened. To 2nd, 23rd, 24th, we didn't see him. So, and... Uh, we have to cry to the court and inform the court about the position in the SS that they refuse access to him. So that is the position as it stands now. But let me hope and believe God that the other court just met on the 26th of July that the SS will obey it. Then secondly, I, am, I can confirm to you this morning that British High Commission or British government is not doing much about this case. Uh, I can confirm also to you that say, that's a, every likelihood of, likelihood of conifers in what happened to, in the fate of my client on the part of the British government. Because sometime in 2015, Nani Kano was arrested in Lagos, a British national. I know what happened. I know therefore they met. I know how they were keeping in constant communication with me, how they were visiting him, both in SSS, where he was initially detained before taken to prison. They were there severally. Severally, every two days they used to visit him in prison, in the DSS facility, when he was being kept detained there. And when he was transferred to prison, they used to, they were going visiting him regularly. At times, they would make sure they would confirm, call to confirm from me about his medical state, uh, condition, whether they were, were, whether they were still with the medical expert. These are things they did in 2015, 16, 17, before he was granted bail. But today, as at yesterday, yesterday was 27th of July, 2021, a British national was arrested on, on 19th, was abducted on 19th of June, 2021, smuggled into Nigeria, thereafter and was was taken to court on 29th and these things happened to the knowledge of British government and apart from that we will not formally notify them about what's happening to his national because at the time Nandi Kano was arrested in Kenya he was arrested as a British national he has already announced his national citizenship for five years or six years before now so and they, they are yes and yesterday being 27 the British High Commission is talking about offering consular services to, to, to Mr. Kano I was I wish, I wish I had opportunity of talking to him I have asked him I was asking the guy commissioner, what, why haven't you seen him since that time? Have they seen him? This is a pertinent question to ask her. They've not set their eyes on him and they can't talk about offering any form of service to them. To today, I can confirm that to you. So, and, the, and you can ask, at least Mr. Bati will observe from the question, the manner he answered this question, that they are talking about that the Nandikan is not, and it's not a serious issue that is causing now. 
in the in the in the in the in the, meet, in the, in the, in the educational summit going on in UK. That I have other serious issues are discussing. So he just responded to you by way of passing. You know, it was, it was, it's not a matter that taking serious as you may be expecting. But what I believe, well, which we are activating now, is that they obviously need a force of law to assert the obligation to the international. Well, and we are doing fine. that with, with our partners in the UK are doing that. If I hear Joffa, we're running out of time. We have just about a minute to go but very quickly. Um, one, I'd like to ask you, how helpful do you think the protests uh, in parts of the southeast are uh, to the Enam de Kano case? Because yesterday we were told there were protests, uh, particularly in Onitsha. And then secondly, I mean, the issue about, uh, you know, uh, a lordship saying, look, she will not grant the transfer of, uh, you know, the accused person uh, from DSS custody to Kujie prison. Uh, what do you think of that, considering the fact that the uh, ESN and uh, IPOP have been accused in the southeast of, uh, you know, uh, freeing persons uh, who were remanded in uh, prison custody in the east? Whether that is true or not is for you to determine. And uh, previously, also, uh, your client jumped bail. Do you think that uh, the uh, court of uh, Justice Bita and Yako uh, you know, considered all of this to take that decision. He's saying he's better off in DSS custody. Very quickly. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Bati, in the first place, you have, been, you have been misinformed. There was no, the court never entertained my application to get him transferred to prison. Uh, the court uh, uh, said he will hear the application on a certain date. But I, when I up, I already applied for him to be transferred to prison, the court said uh, he will not grant it now. And I informed the court that will have an application before the court to, formally before the court to get him transferred to prison. And that application will be entertained on the merit and next agenda date. That hasn't been had. So coming to freeing person from prisons and in the southeast, uh, I don't think I'll say much at, uh, to that effect because the governor of, of Imo State, Hopo Zadima, in several forums, has told the world that those who, who uh, tampered with, prison, with the prison facility in Imo State and police headquarters are not IPOB members. It's on record. You must have it with you. So, and uh, that has to reasonable extent vindicated on every allegations against them to that effect. He told the world that those who were involved in that act were not, were neither IPOB member, not ESN, or people associated with IPOB. I'm talking about the chief secretary of South Limo State. He said it. So, uh, who am I to, 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 to say the contrary, or rather the contrary? So, um, the court didn't say uh, he will not grant the transfer. The application will be had on the merits. Um, uh, IPOB, uh, and also, uh, it's a mere speculation over the media about the fair, okay, uh, about, the, about, the, about the safety, his safety in prison. Let me say this to you. When Namdekano was returned in 2015 in Kujé prison, you must, have, you must have heard about prison break during that period. There was an attempt to, our attempt at prison break. But now the kind of still still at where he was being kept. And there was an issue. He never, he never bothered. And it was, it was an attempt by Boko Haram then to, to invade the prison, to break the prison. The prison. It's on record. He was there. He was in his cell, comfortably. Never made any effort to go. So make inquiry from prison authority. They will tell you that now the kind of is a fine gentleman. He's a non-violent person. So that should be a facility where you keep. He's a person that has respect for rule of law and others. So it, it doesn't, it can never, that not, not, not of such thing will happen. And that's why we're insisting that that application should be heard on the merit by court. And deliver only one word or the other. Because we have facts with us, we have his antecedents when he was detained in prison in 2015, and I can assure you that the court will be convinced to grant that application. And uh, also, I remember last time you asked me about the superiority of Nigerian uh, uh, British passport and, and the British passport. I believe the, the, uh, the present situation must have answered that question to you. Only a few days ago, uh, President Buhari traveled to UK for medical tourism. So if Nigeria is working well, why is he going to UK? So I believe that question has been answered. I don't think I believe I'm not missing any of your question again. Well, Council, um, thank you very much. Uh, in fine, uh, a job for, but I would like you to go with this. We're completely neutral in this matter. We're not taking sides. We're a media house. And that's why again and again so. we invite you. So that uh, you so. can give uh, our viewers, uh, you know, the benefit of what you know. Uh, but we're not taking sides. We're totally so much. neutral. We have no, 
you know, special uh, interest beyond journalism I, I hope so. in the matter. I hope so, Mr. Abate. Well, I've just thank told you, so much, you yeah. that is the thank situation. So much, that is where we stand mm. in the matter. But thank right. you for always obliging.